All right. Let's get this. Let's get this going. We've got uh, got 50 minutes. Got some some stuff to go through. Polly Socks, what's your uh, portfolio? Uh, what's your name on there? Give me a second. Uh, looks like you are next week. Your first one next week. All right. No problem, dude. Okay. So first up, let's see here. We've got... Is it Boris? Somebody make us part of a uni assignment. Would love some feedback. Thank you in advance. I love it when people say that. I say that all the time. <laughs> Thank you in advance. It's like just letting them know ahead of time that you're really thankful they're even reading your message. I don't know. I do that all the time in my emails. Um, but uh, yeah, let's so let's take a look at this. So Looks like we got some duct tape action going on here. Pretty thick duct tape. So maybe it's like wrapped on itself and then wrapped around. So it's kind of like duct tape rope. Uh, this is really interesting. These rounded duct tape end pieces. One thing I really like about this duct tape is the fact that it looks like it's layered on top of itself. So you're getting a little, all those little creases and stuff. And you've got the duct tape pattern of like the little fibers that are inside of the, inside of the tape. Um, where it's kind of breaking down right now is it's quite busy. There's a lot of information happening here and the the variation between the roughness of the materials is also very similar. I wonder if there's a, that doesn't look like it. Um, like I would concentrate on making this metal look more like, more like metal. And I think you had, maybe you have a lot of information in your albedo. I could be wrong. Um, the metal of the actual knife itself seems to be missing that kind of reflective sheen. And there's some scratch patterns that I think are need to be in the roughness versus the uh, albedo. At least that's how I'm perceiving it. I'm not seeing – you don't have any maps in here, so I, I can't really make a, a distinct call on what it is that's causing that. But, but there is a lot of information and stuff happening on here. Just remember that it's okay if the blade is is cleaner. Like the fact that there's not a lot of information here and it was just be like the metal with like maybe like a scratch pattern to the direction that it was polished could be more than enough because with all the information here, you need areas for your eyes to rest. And right now you have like overall detail happening pretty uniformly across the asset. Uh, the other thing too is the wood grain. Like that wood looks pretty. It looks sharp, if that makes sense. Like it looks like for the color that it is, that it should be smoother. Yeah, and if there's going to be damage on the knife, it's probably going to be along the edge here more so than anywhere else. This is really interesting, though. Is this an electrified blade? <laughs> That's terrifying. That's That's interesting. Um, but yeah, I like where it's going. I think just getting those materials separated is going to be, um, dude, it's hot in here. <laughs> uh, that's where the materials. So if the materials get separated, that's, it's going to help you quite a bit. And I think don't be shy to, uh, clean up the depth of the normal information. So right now it's very, very strong. Yeah, other than that, I think your poly count looks fine. Who stabs and twists <laughs> these days? <laughs> it's 
It's all about the stab and tase, bro. Don't stab and tase me, bro. Uh, Lucas. Lucas. Oh, snap. Main shot. Detail lighting. Man. Man. What? What, what am I looking at here? Would love to hear some thoughts on either color, lighting, composition for the main shot or just general feedback for the video. Anything else would take too much time away from others. Oh, so considerate as well. Jeez. So compositionally, this is pretty solid, man. Uh, I would love to see some of the fish uh, further back in the fog, like in this in this god ray look. It will really add that depth because right now it feels like the fish are like right on... They're like on top of everything, if that makes sense. So let's uh, let's let's do this. This one doesn't really make sense It's because it's in front of this thing. But that one could be like further back maybe. So you can see the difference that makes. It's subtle. Like it's kind of happening to this guy back here. Um, but yeah, I think that would help a lot. Um, the other thing is the framing. Uh, there's a lot of information down here that you probably don't don't need one thing i always look at is like seeing how much you can crop without like losing the image the other thing is offsetting this let's see here might be too tight i'm not sure But yeah, there's a lot of information out here that you don't really see, if that makes sense. If you're doing that, uh, so what I've done is darken the side areas a bit more. Uh, when you do that, though, you probably want to um, increase the saturation a bit. And then make sure that that's not happening in this core area because... That's in the direct light. So like where the shadows are, essentially, you want some more saturation and then darkening. Um, and then down here in the corner, you can just almost, almost kill the information. This is a sick image, though, man. This is really, really cool. You should be very, very proud. This looks awesome. Uh, I think the bubbles could maybe use a little bit of um, shadowing. Right now, they're all pretty uniformly lit. Later, Dave. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Tie-dye, dude. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, we're doing all right. I think we're doing okay. How are you guys? What do you guys think? Are we doing all right? Let's see here. So uh, we want to push down the highlights in the shadows. Let's try. Let's try it. See if this works. Yeah, so like... Push the highlights down. That's kind of working. Let's see if we can push the midtones. Yeah, basically, want to kind of try and wipe those out. Mm, I don't know if I like that enough. But yeah, so see, now your bubbles have a little bit more depth as to if they're being affected by the light and if they're not. Smart guy, don't darken the light spots. <laughs> Whoa. You're like, dude, no, 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 no. It's going to be, it's going to be fine, man. Nailed it. Nailed it. Um, this is sick, man. Well done. That's pretty cool, dude. Uh, I think that's all I would 
really say about this. This looks really good. Yeah, be super proud of this. This is impressive. Uh, oh, yeah. You wanted me to look at this video. Let's check this out really quick. Oh, dude, look at the shadows, too. Oh, my God. So the wiggle feels a little strange here. Um, this is a, this shot right here. This is actually, so I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. We'll get this up to 1080. We're going to go back. I'm going to speed this up as well afterwards. So this shot really strong, the little fish moving around. I think when you get into this type of shot right here, see there's a, there's a doubloon down there, right? Add some more and then uh, model a few little pebbles and just kind of scatter them around the bottom here. Um, so this shot is pretty cool, but it feels like it's looking down too much. Like it feels like it needs to be looking a little bit more up. And then these need to be kind of blurred out. The other thing that I'm noticing is this actually feels like you're not underwater in this shot. And I think a lot of that has to do with just like the, there's not a lot of stuff in the air. Um, here, I'll just copy this and put this in here. There's not a, there's not a lot of stuff in the air. And when I say air, I mean the water, right? So it actually feels like you're outside, not underwater. Like there's, there's little particles and stuff floating around. That's really good. And I think if you were to get just a little bit more, yeah, the globe not falling down is a little strange. I didn't think about that, dude. If it, I mean, it's kind of moving, isn't it? But if it was, if it was falling really, really slowly, like the, you see with the chair too. So everything has got a little bit of a wiggle. Man, that shot is cool. Um, overall, it looks really good. And then I think maybe some caustics up here could be a nice addition. And then I think you're set. But I mean, those those are very particular things to to point to point out because it looks really good, man. But I think that's how you'd bring it over the top. Oh, the other thing is in your video. I'm just gonna like. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it at the fastest speed. So in this video. So you got the camera moving, right? Camera still. I think if it was, if the, if the first shot is moving, every shot needs to be moving at about the same rate. Like those going from this one to this one is really good. They're moving at the same rate. Everything is, is pretty nice. So when you get these still shots, it's, it's super strange. Like if you're going to, if this shot is pretty still, this one actually needs to be like um, panning like the last shot, but then slowing down to almost no movement. And then you switch to this shot. So it's like you're not, um, like people are paying attention to where things are moving. And then all of a sudden you're moving them another direction or it's just still, it, it screws with the mind a little bit. But yeah, those are, those are just, things to things to work on man this table is sick anywho i will move on this is really cool all right got this subway i remember this subway let's see what is requested of us Really need some critiques on this environment I've been working on. Anything really tips to make it better? It could be better presentation and so forth would be really appreciated. Gold Eagles, dude. Thanks for the follow. Thanks, Pontus. Yeah, having a bit of transition isn't bad either. Yeah, the, the fades between shots really helps, especially with the motion. Imagine if it wasn't doing motion in one but motion in the other and then you do a fade that's going to look super weird uh so 
we have looked at this scene before, and I think you're actually at a point where you should, um, where it's done. I mean, we can nitpick at smaller things, but I think it actually would benefit you to move on to the next scene. There's maybe some roughness variation that could happen here. And like these little micro details here, I'd love to see some like built up around the corners here. It looks like there's a little bit. Uh, and then the other thing is the palette scale is kind of strange versus like the size of the stairs and the railing. Like you're, I don't know, like I'm imagining people walking up this, this palette's maybe about a third smaller than it should be. I think, but overall, I mean, I think it's, this place must be abandoned. And then there's, looks like some stuff is going down. So if, from this angle, it actually looks quite a bit more empty. And some more information happening along the floor here would probably be worth worth the time and effort. It looks like you have a low like uh, height fog happening here. I would probably bring it up to here just so you get some room for the transition. Maybe more light in the foreground. Interesting. Yeah. That could be a thing. The other thing is uh, you don't seem to have a detail normal that's tiling at a high frequency. So like, it's really hard to um, hold the resolution between everything like this, this stuff down here actually looks higher res than the floor. And if you can get a detail normal on this, that's got a similar frequency to that. It might help blend that together. The other thing is maybe these should be closer in value range and it doesn't, maybe it's not being affected by the lighting. Maybe that's what's going on. Cause I'm seeing it here as well. If there's a flashlight here that usually is going to like span out quite a bit and probably cast a bunch of shadows this way. I like the addition of this cup on the steps and I like that the steps aren't like even like they're there. They were designed even, but they've also aged a little bit and they've got some dirt and sand and stuff on them. That tunnel looks really cool though. Your wire is ending before the shot as well, right here. Is that, yeah, that's wire. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can point out immediately. For having these nice straight edges, you're breaking them up enough that I think it's okay. Usually I would say just add a few cuts and kind of wiggle it a little bit as it goes into the distance or add props on it like you're doing here to just kind of break up the lines. But um, yeah, these little rocks here, I would totally scatter around the, around the place. Yeah. So this first shot looks like the one you've been designing to. Um, if you're going to show these other shots, you definitely need to um, add some more stuff in here does the spray paint change the roughness so it depends how old the spray paint is so just think about that if you're going to address it at all or look into it safe place doesn't look very safe man i'm going to be honest <laughs> maybe it's telling you the safe place is further down i don't know eat fresh what Anyways, yeah. This shot actually looks like you can move on. The other shots, if you want to show the other ones, you're going to have to uh, tune the lighting here. These are really bright. And then just like getting a little bit more propping around here. Probably use a different graffiti over here if you're going to show this area. Oh, that's cool down there with the pipes and stuff. Whoa, and there's a little entryway down there. Dude, that's... <laughs> you like that, Ma? Eat fresh. I want to believe. Do you see that in the back? I want to believe too. In Subway. Eat fresh. This is not a paid sponsorship. Uh, onward and forward. This is a super work in progress, but would like, it would be cool to hear your thoughts. The lighting is perhaps too dark in places. And the only thing that I can say is near finished. I can say is near finished is the rock wall material. 
I don't think it's too dark. I do not think it's too dark. Maybe the wires here could be, uh, maybe like one or two of them could be red or a different color. Let's 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 take a gander. Man, this is impressive. Oh. No, I think you're okay. It doesn't spread fast enough. I mean, maybe here. You could lighten those those steps up, the undersides of the steps. But honestly, my favorite shot is this one right here. Favorite, favorite. My favorite. The rocks feel flat to you? I could see that. You mean like when you're looking at them from this view? There's also some weird shapes like uh, this this pattern here. Is that... Did you make those rocks in... Um, substance designer oh yeah they do look like when you're looking at it from this view i mean the rocks are being carved right so it's like you carve down a, a a shaft that you are now like building this these stairways down i would suggest maybe just like displacing it a little bit more yeah in this view you're like oh this one it looks it looks relatively all right i mean in general this looks okay specifically because like it was shaved away but it doesn't hurt to uh push in some of the spots just to get a little bit of depth in there i i really like this one though this actually reminds me a lot of um some valve stuff actually it's pretty cool yeah it's some wire variation maybe some Maybe some patterns here where you can see like water has built up and then dripped like a little line in the middle. Yeah, this rust is nice. It's subtle yet everywhere. It's it's really good. I would like to see maybe some things explaining how stuff's connected. Maybe some brackets here. Oops. Either brackets or bolts or something. Um, this is really weird to me that these are blended together like that. Um, but yeah, interactions between the, the pieces and how they all fit together would be really useful. Like, where are we at here? I like that. So maybe like a bolt there, maybe one there and there. Maybe one here and here instead of on this one. Just to help like connect things together. Maybe here there's like a weld. That could be nice. A weld pattern. Here would totally be like something like this. Right? Nice. There we go. Something like that. Just to keep everything together. You have... You give very great advice, bud. It's very cool. Thanks, Gold. Thanks, man. Uh, let's see here. This, I mean, maybe you could find out how to connect these better to the side. I wonder if you can just like. They weld I-beams, I'm pretty sure. I mean, they probably do weld I beams, but I think when they're when it's an I beam going into another I beam, you're gonna want some like serious support. Like there's, hang on here. It's a little too hardcore. All right this this type of stuff like maybe they go into each other and then you're bolting them there like just thinking about how things connect together is really important because it helps you sell the reality of it like look at this one like maybe when it there's like a plate there like all that little extra detail you get that'll basically add your 30 percent high high frequency detail to this shot and then you're good to go 
it only needs to be in a few spots like here, here, and here. Maybe up here and you're like it, the rest is going to like sell itself. Dynamesh, what's up, man? How you doing? What was I going to look up though? That's the question. Oh. What is that madness? Tim Dan, dude, thanks for the follow. So here's here's one thing you could look at is like explaining how these stairs are, are holding themselves together. Like you've got the side beams, but maybe there needs to be a central support. And if there's not a central support, I would highly suggest bending these steps a little bit from all the usage. So they've kind of got a little bit of wear. Uh, if not, finding ways to connect them to the side more is going to be important. Yeah. Any onward. Onward. Oh. Ooh. Didn't we listen to this song already? What is happening here? All right, we're going to the Pixel Sunset. Saxophone incoming. Yeah, super ambitious scene. There's lots of stuff you got to to build here. So this is Jonathan. Let me make sure. Yes, Jonathan Lester. Work in progress of my alleyway. I just want some overall feedback on general look and scene. Thank you. Okay, so this shot's cool. Focal point is... Um, oh, yeah. Feeling this. So focal point is definitely the telephone pole. And in that case, you probably don't even need to... Let's see here. It's good to have a little bit of space over it. Let's see what that looks like. So framing wise, whoa, I'm going to paste it again so I can just move it around inside. Um, so there's a lot of information down here that you don't really need to see. And you have a lot of room here to kind of like center this up a bit more. Something maybe like something like this. You also want to be careful about terminating this edge into the direct corner of the image. Same problem you'll have down here. So you got to watch out for those. Mainly because it just kind of it feels weird when you see it. Um, the other thing too is when you start texturing this, think about this pole and like where the met, like what the metal is. Drop, what's up, man? Droppy hop, how you doing? Um, when you texture this guy, make sure that it separates from the building behind it. Uh, you can do that by like say this this wood and this is like a rubber and the metal. All those values either are lighter than the building behind it or darker. You can use lighting to do that as well, but just remember to try and keep those separated. Got to keep them separated. Um, let's look at this shot. So this shot is pretty cool. Man, there's a lot of stuff to build for sure. So in this shot, there's a lot of empty space here. So make sure you're doing like a manhole, maybe like Sometimes in the road, they'll in like back alleys, they'll lower the central point down. Just came back from studio. Smiley face. Uh, make sure that the in the alleyways, sometimes they'll dip it down and then they'll do like a little drain. Uh, maybe they'll do some like like a maintenance thing. Like I don't know what they're like a cap that opens up and like exposes some wires for work. Uh, these areas are usually dipped down so that the water can like ground to the center area and then head towards a drain this beam right here feels quite thick right now i'm not sure what the design of that is um and then just make sure there's enough space above things so that you can make sense of like where would the roof start like 
So you have this edge, right? Right over the corner there, does the ground start here? Right? And if it does, then that means that you only have like so much room before the ceiling. So you have to think about the thickness of everything in combination with itself, even though you're not going to show those spaces. Definitely might be worth uh, denting this a little bit and maybe lifting up the bottom edge and just letting either light come out through there or just hinting at like a space on the other side. Uh, this trash can here, the bigger one, the dumpster, feels like it might be tilted and angled down a little too much. Um, and the depth of it might be a little, like check your scale on everything just to double check. And if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, I think this edge and these edges design-wise are about the same height, mainly because machines have to be able to interact with them and they're not going to want to have a unique machine per thing. Um, make sure there's like wires and stuff to this. Like maybe this goes up and goes that way and maybe goes over here, connects to this. Like tell stories wherever you can. And think about how empty the space is. You can do like patches of concrete. You can do like the little manhole thing. The the ground that's dipped down here means that maybe the ground here is a little bit darker because it's still wet from like the rainfall from the day before or something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is looking pretty good so far. I, I would say just keep going. And... Um, yeah, share again when, when you've gotten a little bit further. Compositionally as well, this one's pretty good. You've got this guy, you've got... like that's These are some strong lines. It's good. And you've got this back element here. Feels nice, man. I almost would suggest putting the, the bigger dumpster here and then doing the smaller ones here just because it gives your eyes something to rest on. Anywho. The shot's pretty interesting as well. I won't comment on the other ones just because I need to see this stuff a little bit further along. Oh, Zalo. Wait, 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 wait. Zalo. Is that Mittens? Yes. Mittens. Uh, mittens, make sure to... Um, can someone help him or her uh, locate... So if you go to Art Related, you go to the pins, you can click on this link. It'll bring you up here. You click on this guy and you can fill a form out and then you'll get into the queue for portfolio reviews. Oh man. Okay, so this is not current work in progress of my environment. I'm looking at how it's rendering and what I need to recreate. So right now your ground is super soft. Uh, I wouldn't go as extreme as that. I would maybe use displacement in order to make that look. I don't know if that's how you're doing it there. Um, the AO here is really strong. Probably toning that back a little bit. Art man, yeah, I just did yours. Gotta love the kids that don't want to sleep. It's all good, man. They'll have their time. <laughs> They'll have their moment where they can't, they can't go to sleep when they want to. Is it Sui? Thanks for the follow. I don't know if that's how you say it, but thanks. Um, awesome, sorry. If you have not, I don't know if you are. Join the Discord. Share some stuff. Kevin! Kevin! Um, yeah, so this displacement, pretty strong right now. I would probably calm that down a little bit. And uh, let displacement do the work for you. I'm not sure if that's what's happening, but yeah. Uh, this looks pretty cool. And I, I'm intrigued by where everything is placed. Compositionally, I think it's it's looking pretty good. I think that... Um, 
Let's see here. We've got 15 minutes, by the way, guys. We've got one, two, three, four, five, five more to go. So I need to start blasting through these. Um, let's do this. So I think I think this stuff here, I think moving it back here and moving this one further back here. Whoops. Or no, actually, this one's okay here. I think taking this one and moving it further back that way it kind of follows the same perspective line as everything else. Maybe have another one back here. It's like sculpting with, with geometry, with pixels. It's going to be dangerous near this thing, but uh, overall, I think it's it's heading in a pretty good direction. Um, this is really flat feeling right now. I definitely add some of the, like I'd make these pieces and then just place them on top all over, just to just to get that looking not so blocked out. And I think I think you know that. This area is looking pretty cool. I think just controlling that AO is going to be important. And then make sure that your screen space AO is really like selling these shapes, interacting with each other. I would definitely get a material on this ground, e even in this view, just to see what that looks like. But yeah, keep going. I don't I don't think uh I don't think it's where compositionally I think it's doing alright. Just keep keep pushing. So not too much to say on it yet. All right, what do we got next? We got Johnny. I think this is Johnny. What? What is... Oh, this is your concept that you're going off of. Yeah, see, I think this is actually flatter than, than you perceive it as. I think what's making it have the depth is a lot of trash on top. Uh, and then the puddles uh, just kind of being cut up by the trash and mud. Or like dirt edge going into the puddle. So just adding like a bunch of trash kind of piled in there is going to really like push it, I think. Um, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. There's also a fence back here. And in this one, I think it just keeps going back. You could totally just take the scene, duplicate it, flip it backwards and just kind of move it back there and just kind of continue the space further back, maybe kind of rounding the corner a little bit. Yeah, right now it feels like snow, right? That's that's normal though. I think based on what what is here right now, you could you could I could see that. You guys are crazy. Whoa. That is really intriguing. Whoa, those feet though. Ugh. Ugh. Um, where are we at here? Blah. Is this the same one? So I don't know if you also create critique non game art renders. I mean, yeah, sure, man. I think that, uh, it's pretty foggy. Getting rid of some of that fog is going to be really useful. I think. Just giving it a bit more range as well is going to help. Like, look at that ground. That ground is super cool. I'd actually like... Like, take that that noise. And like... Um, oh. oh, man. This song's dope. Doing this along the edge. And just kind of getting the, the ground to kind of crack up over the sides. That could be pretty cool. So 
especially with that highlight. See this highlight here? You can get some like really cool like, I don't even know if I can fake it. Like getting that detail along the edge. You could do some really cool like depth to the sides, right? Anyways, this is looking cool. Um, I don't have too much to say on it right now. I'm curious. Uh, I, th I feel like composition wise, you probably don't even need something like that. And it's really weird. Like this guy's huge, right? I don't like that. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know what I'm looking at is the only thing. But in general, I think the idea is pretty cool. I don't think there's enough information here yet to know what, what's happening. And then like toning the fog back a bit. It feels like really dusty or something. Uh, UI design elements. What? Oh, man. Oh, that's cool. Let's see here. So with stuff like this, um, the space that you have on the side here, it's really tight to like, so this side here, if you like measure that, I'll just do this so we can see it. Like framing wise, you wanna make sure at least you're fitting inside of that space. So that already helps quite a bit. There you go. So then you could probably go even just a little bit further, but uh, that's kind of what I'm feeling. Oh, that's too thick. Anywho. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of weird that the background here is, is dark. Man, I can tell you've played a little bit. <laughs> or at least studied the UI. But yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, this this has the same problem where there's a space here. It's just not... Like, there's all of this over here. Wait, what? Oh, I see. I'm like super confused. It's this needs to be like all the way over. There we go. Yeah, you need that padding somewhere maybe around there. Something like that would help. Angled scrolling is pretty rough. Usually you got to be careful about that stuff. Oh, you're a fan of the Lorem Ipsum, huh? Have you seen the bacon, bacon version? Give me bacon. Porcella, tongue swine. Look at that, make it spicy. Just gonna give that to you guys. There you go. Some good stuff in there. 
fat back pork belly chicken hamburger berg doggen meatloaf jowl. <laughs> uh, onward. Kevin, buddy. Good stuff, dude. Uh, let's get you to sign up for the portfolios. And then we'll take a look at that. Alex, this looks pretty cool. Uh, the way that these pieces are melting feels very unnatural, though. I, I'm not sure why. I think it's because the inner area is, like, melting away inward. It's like... I mean, I know that you're trying to show maybe, like, it's dipping into the sand. Not in real time, but just you're just showing that the material can, like... Where the sand can take over and, like, the rocks show up. You want to make sure that these dip in evenly instead of just like skewing and stretching. <laughs> Thanks for the V. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then like where these colors are, it's kind of like making sense out of how, how those are where they are. So right now everything is just kind of feeling a little random. The tessellation on your sphere as well could be higher just to show what you're trying to show off. Yeah, it's like these weird, uh, these things here. It's very strange to me. If it's part of the design, it needs to be in every single one of them. And then like from there you break it up. This is also very, very saturated. And this is very white, like maybe toning that down a little bit. You got to make sure those ranges are in check. And then your roughness, I think this is your your roughness is like uh like i'm expecting the roughness where the colors are to be different and right now it's kind of random yeah like it was soft and then they stamped like a shape into it i think i can uh before i roll out i'll, I'll bring up my uh Oh man, is this the old substance designer? What did I just do? Three days remaining. Oh my gosh. Give us a second to generate. Computing. Let's kill the stream. <laughs> there you go. All right. Let's get this up here. What is going on? View in 3D. There we go. Okay. So let's do like plain high res material definition. Tessellation scale. Tessellation amount. Okay, so you can see like uh, where these are at versus the the dirt. Oh no, chaos skater. I'm sorry. Um. So let's see. So right here is where I'm actually blending that. So I've got my my stones, and then I've got this like dirt with rocks and stuff, and I'm blending them using a height blend. So the height offset. You can see as I move it, the stones are actually, actually I should lower the resolution of this. Let's make it like a 512, just so you can see how, how things move around. So it's still gonna take a while to compute. So you can see when it's moving around, they're just moving in space. Mango, what's up? We're about to end here, but you know, it's nice to see you. Um, the, think about them physically moving in space up and down instead of like skewing and stretching as they go. You can see them moving upward. At least I got some substance designer. 
Yeah. So you see, this is like the full range where you're essentially not getting any of the pebbles. But as you bring it down, this is probably killing the stream. I don't know. Yeah, so you're just blending two heights together. There's also another one. It's like material blend. This is a material blend now, just so you know. So you can condense it down. So like... You can plug these all in. The range of every map. And the range of every other map. And then you press F3 to collapse it down. And then uh, it will look at the height map between these two and do the same thing. So you can do a full blend. Anywho, think about that. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. You guys have been a pleasure to uh, chat with and read your texts. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys on Monday. And um, have a good weekend. One minute of stream worth feels good, man. Thanks for the follows. You guys get your little little action here. Some, some slow loading there. Oh, it feels good, man. No, thank you, Veyron. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Feels good, man. Cheers, advisable. I'll catch you guys later. This will be going up on uh, YouTube. All right, peace.